Good morning, folks. Today we're going to be looking at some solar eruptions, a ton of great news articles, some Earth weather, and more. We're starting our focus on the departing limb down south as we come to spaceweathernews.com and switch to 193 angstroms. The activity and releases you see on the right are indeed moderate-sized ejections. Some flare-driven, some are lifting filaments. When we switch to 304 angstroms and tilt 90 degrees to watch the departing limb in focus, you can see how the structures are destabilizing to produce a fairly large complex of CMEs as Mercury comes in to conjoin the Sun back there. None of the individual components was titanic, but they are concentrated and focused into an eruption cloud that is going to miss all the planets. Eruptive activity may continue on the far side, but we're back to a blank disk after the Earth-facing quiet shut down every spot on the disk last week solar wind here, so this is definitely the faint edge of the coronal hole stream and most of it missed us. The signature is there, but it is very, very weak and so now we look ahead to the northern opening. Kinetic Alpha and Waves and IMF set a lithospheric watch for earthquakes and volcanoes elevated for about two days until its particle stream arrives early next week. Let's jump way out first to the Tarantula Nebula. We're focusing bottom left on the honeycomb portion. Just a little FYI in the mainstream science paradigm, this is caused by just two supernova. Two exploding stars did all that. Anyone have a more electrical explanation? Up next we're going to Mars, where I'd imagine most of you know about the ancient ocean that covered the north. But now scientists are focusing on a much smaller sea that used to exist in the southern hemisphere and say it may explain how life begins. Thing is, they're relating it back to Earth, and if it worked here, and back then they had an ocean and atmosphere, what does it mean for Mars? Up next, there are two new visualizations from the Goddard SVS. First shows every hurricane thus far this season, but more importantly is the brown water intensification animation afterwards. They use Tropical Storm Bill from 2015 and are attempting to show how its connection to the upper level flow drove so much water on land before its arrival that it thought it was still over the ocean and it kept getting stronger. We've seen that happen twice this season already, so perhaps it's worth checking out. Last link is to the September U.S. climate report. It was a calmer, less extreme month for temperatures, but for like the hundredth month in a row, the maximum temperature chart shows the most blue and the minimum temperature chart shows the most red, meaning the top and bottom ranges are coming together, which is technically a more stable climate situation with less variability. Not sure that's what they were going for. Central system in the U.S. expected to connect with Hurricane Nate as it makes landfall in New Orleans tonight. That's our top weather warning for the Gulf Coast region and the flooding to the north and northeast. Remember folks, the observer's event of the year is coming to the desert again next President's Day, much better here than in many places in the country in February, trust me. And don't forget to book your room as well as it is about half up at the hotel. We've got the world's wind maps, null school, and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.